Charles Garrity says, I'm quite impressed with Owens. I always saw her as a normie conservative, but give her credit. Yeah, she is, uh, she is going above and beyond what a normie conservative would have to do. And what I understand from what Candace Owen is doing is she is going after the whole fallacious process of Jewish treatment on the public space of their ideological opponents. And she says, no more. No more can you extort us. No more can you threaten us. And I've been targeted by the very same powers that Candace Owen is describing. And I, I would love it at some point if Candace Owen looks into my history. Because I got the Daily Beast, because she's out there, you know, trapping them into, into a case where she can truly demonstrate that she's not uh, a racist anti-Semite, and that yet she gets called this, and that they lie, and that they use fallacy, fallacies to get there. Um, I've been called much, more, much, much worse than an anti-Semite by these people. Uh, in 2018-19, they started a campaign to make the internet believe that I was a rapist <coughs> when I wasn't. And in, I mean, just, just this year and last year, they are engaged in a campaign that led millions of people to believe that I'm a murderer. And so Candace, uh, I, I don't want to minimize your suffering, Candace. I know they targeted you and they targeted you hard. But uh, look into my story. I mean, they, they went hard. They went hard at making people believe such that every morning I wake up and I have at least a tweet of someone who still believes I'm a murderer. And this has been done by Jewish and terrorists, starting with a Jewish journalist at the Kelly Whale at the uh, Daily Beast, uh, Daily Beast, which is a Jewish outlet. And then it got to other Jewish writers at other Jewish outlets like Newsweek. <clears throat> there, were, there has been mainstream smearing of me from the moment I started analyzing the question of Jewish influence in America and being somewhat critical of it. Not to the point that I don't want Jews to be able to speak, but to the point where I want us to realize that there is major blind spots. Major blind spots in uh, how a bunch of intellectual Jews will treat a question and will inform the public about it. And I saw the build up of this blind spot. And I, I wasn't sure then that it was destined to act in the way it does in the Israel and Gaza situation. But when you realize why this blind spot has been cultivated in Western society, <clears throat> it is for a couple of reasons. One is the control of demographics of Western civilization. One is this anti-white hatred, uh, this, this whole system. Uh, and, and Anti-black hatred of this group is not the same as anti the anti-white one. It is an anti-blackness of, uh, of condescension to a certain extent. And it passes through what can you properly uh, identify, the, for example, the impact of abortion clinics on the black population in the U.S. The black population of the U.S. is stable. This is amazing. This is amazing in 2024 in a world that is so advantageous to black people. Uh, you know, where uh, minorities are given opportunities that white people aren't given. It is amazing that the black population is stable. And why is it stable? It's because they are targeted by the very same genocidal processes that are targeting white people. They're targeted by the birth pill, abortion clinics, professional, you know, and this whole, this whole selling that the system has done to black people is the wrong one. It's to tell them that... Uh, Oh, yeah, you know, you can be successful. You can be Don Lemon. You can be, oh, you're a minority. We can give you a, a little bump so that you get a CNN host position despite your lack of talent. Oh, you can be an actor because now we just we hire exclusively black people in this movie and we hire 90% black people in this movie, which actually is uh, as much genocidal as the birth pill and as the abortion clinic. It's, it's taking a population and pushing them toward the wrong branches of realization. Uh, just like uh, females are being pushed toward the wrong branches of realization when they are dangled into, toward the university. Yes, DK Shadow, I love that word, dangle. Dangle that carrot. The problem is as long as you dangle that carrot, uh, 
what's the natural state? What's the natural outcome that should have happened to black people in America? And I'm talking about all this because it, ultimately it's why Candace Owen has a case. She has a case against the Jewish elite. She has a case against the people who are attacking her right now. And so that's why I want to talk about this. It's not that I'm suddenly a, a black nationalist, okay? But the, the, the regular outcome of the black population demographically in the U.S. should be that they have, by now, overtaken the whole of the U.S. Breeding like rabbits. You know, they have all of the features. They have all of the genetic features that you would expect a high breeding population could have. So, for example, their, their closest genetic cousins in Africa have a birth rate of six to seven babies per woman. Uh, they, ha they, they have lower IQ, which is associated with higher capacity to make children. The natural state of the black population right now is pushed down by certain forms of propaganda and genocidal practices that didn't lead them to reach the level of success they should have and could have reached. Uh, and I, I believe that the Kanye West and the Candace Owens of this world, when they look at the situation, they see there's something wrong there. And the something wrong it, is everything that was thrown at the black population. And to a certain extent, I would, I would argue it was tested on the black population before it was run on the white population. Family courts, systemic perception of the male as abuse, the birth pill, all of these options to get rid of children. All of this came from technological progression, mediatic propaganda, and political controls, all of which under high Zionist influence. And so when you consider everything I've said for the last 15 minutes, and you have a Tim Pool, and so, oh, bro, what? <laughs> Why are you why are you so obsessed with Jews, bro? Like Myanmar. What about the war in Myanmar? There are babies burning in Myanmar. Do you know how many babies are burning in Myanmar? Why do you talk about Gaza? It's so weak of him. Let's listen to what he This is so ridiculous. You have to give credits to Richard Spencer for telling me in 2018 Tim Pool is a fucking retard, basically. And I was like, are you sure? I mean, uh, I kind of like the Tim cast. I like the hat. But under the hat, something is hiding. Another hat. North well, Africa. NATO, we just use NATO as, I mean, it's not, we're, we're pulling the strings of NATO. My point is, I would argue, Israel is pull, pulling we're, a lot of our strings in terms of No, I policy. think you're wrong. I think we're pulling the strings of Israel. That's the real, that's... <laughs> If we were pulling the streets of Israel, uh, if we were pulling the strings of Israel, we would have a class of American billionaire, white Christian, like carrying the cross in Israel, like the cross tattooed on the heart, and they'd be white American Christians, and they'd be playing in the back scene of Israeli politics. They'd be controlling all of the Israeli outlets. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. How can you not see the asymmetry between a system that is penetrated by the agents of the other and a system that is completely left alone? The Israeli politicians are Israeli. The Israeli newspapers are Israeli. The Israeli, uh, the Israeli media is Israeli. But can you say the same about American media, American politics? No, you can't. So Tim Pool here in absolute bad faith is refusing to see the obvious asymmetry, which is that pulling the strings. We don't even have strings in Israel. We don't. That's so really what's going on because Israel is an intelligence and military asset for us in the Middle East. Yes, and DK Shadow says it's not the Jews wailing at the Christian wall. It's not, uh, it's not every Israeli politician in order to, to get his position of power, needs to go kneel uh, in front of George Washington or what? <laughs> kiss the feet of the George Washington status. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. It's our politicians that need to go kiss the, the Jewish wall to be elected here. Least. So when we are staging... But how is it an asset if they've gotten us into all the major no, conflicts? No, no, those are our wars. In... Those are our wars. Okay. Na so when, in, you see, NATO's in, not getting in, us involved in things. We're getting NATO involved in things. And Israel's not... You see, you see my point? I, I agree on NATO. I don't agree on Israel. I, wait, it, you... to, to, 
to take the comparison with NATO is absolutely dishonest. NATO itself is subject to high Israeli influence, high Jewish proportions. They have historically joined tasks and strikes that have been totally in line with Israeli interests. So, so to even make a comparison here without realizing that you're talking about the very same phenomenon, NATO interests are penetrated by Jewish interests in the very same way the American military is. You, you're, there there, there are some Americans. This makes no sense. Okay, there are some, but I mean, like the founding neocons, who, who, you know, the PNAC group. Those guys were Americans, but they basically did all that for Israel. So I think so, I think Australia is roping us into this war with China. Okay, why well, why are we well, sending in ships Tim, and, and personnel to Australia? Tim. Well, tell us, Tim Pool, what are the fallacies committed by Australian media that are propagated across the mediatic waves in the U.S.? What is the genocide of Australians that I can't deny by law in Europe and soon Canada? <clears throat> what is the, uh, is, is there such a term as anti-Australianism? Anti-Australianism, which is denying the, the right of the Australians to exist. None of these things exist. Anti-Semitism exists anti-laws that are against the denial of the Holocaust exist. Control of the media exists. It's so ridiculous. I can't believe that this is a mainstream show happening in front of tens of thousands of people, and Tim Pool is just spooing this crap. I took three days off the internet, and this little sneaky fucker goes behind my back and tells these lies to hundreds of thousands of people. In, in, in 2002, Tim. Did they even send us any kangaroos? What is this? Know, you guys know about going what's on? going on with Australia and China, right? Yeah, they're having big issues, and that's and why we sold Australia a whole bunch of like, weapons. Yep. weapons and yep. stuff. By the way, uh, if, you, if you want the, the current uh, true representation of the state between China and Australia, it's that I don't even know that Australian interest will exist in 100 years from now, because there is a wave of immigration from China and from the Asian nations to Australia, and I wouldn't be surprised that we have, a, we have an Asian Australia coming, not one where the English proportion of the population there even uh, has any meaning to the, politic, the, the political development going forward. Yep, yep, like yep. That for yep. the, and there's yeah. food issues and dairy issues. It's, it's been wild. It's been going, so when I went uh, 10 years ago to New Zealand, I started learning about the conflict between Australia and China, New Zealand is partially involved in. And the things China's been doing in this region of the world is 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 massive. I mean, they're building these these naval bases and air force bases on, on the atolls. They're they're manufacturing mm -hmm. islands to establish power. They're sinking Vietnamese vessels. Okay, that could all be true. China may have aggressive intentions toward Australia, but there is no subversion of the American public by Australian interest, which is why no one comments on the damn Australians. The damn Australians that are annoying us with this uh, propaganda that doesn't exist. I mean, the threat here is tremendous, and, and Taiwan is roping us into it. I think the real... Okay, but we have the choice to say no, and we are not misinformed about it. The issue is Taiwan, China. Why are we involved in this? Do you know what's going on with China and Taiwan and how much money we spend and how many personnel we have in Taiwan? Meanwhile, I think the Taiwan... Okay, well, let's remove this personnel. Now, there, there's, I've never heard a single argument that we should have this personal dare. And so vote for Donald Trump and make them pay or whatever. Taiwanese, I, the Taiwanese are lobbying revolution. us so that they can get us involved in their regional conflict. Tim, I agree. And there is some of that. But the, but the reality, like you must know this. I mean, the reality in terms of dollar value, the, the reality in terms of espionage leverage, like Jeffrey Epstein, who I... So this guy ended up, uh, you know, trying to make a case to Tim Pool. You're ridiculous. Uh, there's an asymmetry. We're not talking about extortion. We're not like if I if I write a blog post tomorrow morning arguing that America has nothing to do in Taiwan. There's not going to be an article in the mainstream media tomorrow, the next day, uh, claiming that I'm a murderer. And yet there is when I talk about Israel. Why? Why is it that what I can say about Taiwan, I can't say about Israel? And that is the great question of Candace Owen. That is the quest on which she is, and it's beautiful what she's been doing. I commented, Candace goes solidly against the established practice of certain Zionist media to be smearing anyone who doesn't fully subscribe 
to their bloodthirsty plans for humanity. The same bounty hunters that have been going after her for years have been going after me too. In 2018, they tried smearing me as a rapist. Then in 2023, as a murderer. Always, they were wrong. Most importantly, this system of ideological extortion has been so obvious in its evil that people like Candace have now no problem standing on a moral high ground with advertisers and a mainstream outlet and undermining their schemes. This has to stop. Ultimately, what these radical Zionists are demanding is that Western civilization pays the price of liberalism in letting them express themselves freely while denying for ourselves the liberty of thought that is supposed to come with an open society. Bombing babies is bad, you greedy, bloodthirsty idiots. You won't intimidate us into thinking the contrary. Most of my career has been a play on what Candace Owen is doing right now. <clears throat> Here's the play. Uh, I published a scientific theory. I know it's correct because I'm a PhD. I, I understand this field. And I don't want to cite my PhD as a form of authority, but I know what I'm talking about. I know that this theory is absolutely correct in biology, is deepening our understanding of biology. And yet I had questions about, is, is this whole system what, that I see with Jews preferring to hire Jews, Jews preferring to invite Jews on the intellectual podcast, Jews extend uh, talking about Jews to other Jews. I was like, can, can it even learn something from the outside? And so I, I launched myself on a quest, which is first to publish uh, a, a scientific theory and then test, will this scientific theory be fully ignored by the academia, the media, or will they take it in? Because I know that a true scientific theory, 100 years down the line, 100 years down the line, this is this is uh accepted this will be in textbook i know this what i was wondering is is there even openness of political enemy and so i started covering the question of jewish interest in america knowing very well that it would trigger the responses that it triggered and this is exactly what candace is doing this week she's trapping now if you want to trap you need a bait and Candace as her blackness, as a good bait, I have my scientific theory. And we're like, we're sitting in front of the bait and they're, they're, they're coming at it like uh, fucking carnivorous uh, dinosaurs. Like, T-Rex. And I'm like, holy shit, it's as bad as you would think. It's as fucking bad as you would think. Candace Owen made this amazing uh, interview. I highly recommend people go watch this, okay? This is an intellectual clinic <clears throat> in how you set a trap and you let the guy fall in it. Uh, people have been saying, oh, I'm not satisfied, but the, the rabbi won rhetorically. No, <laughs> not at all. This is Candace Owen setting the most beautiful trap for a radical Zionist I've ever seen. Okay? She sits there and she takes note and she's like, oh yeah, keep telling us about this. And she has a point. The, the most important point of this interview is what's the definition of anti-Semitism? Because you're, she took this guy who wrote a whole article about her um, and where, where he's saying she's an anti-Semite, just like Ra Rabbi Shmukli, okay? And who, who, who Kendall Owen called Rabbi Shmukli a unholy rabbi with a rag daughter uh, because... His daughter happens to be a promoter. This is unbelievable. It's like out of a, out of a fiction book or something. Uh, his daughter happens to be, he's a rabbi, but his daughter happens to be operating a sex shop on the internet <coughs> uh, with, with a special type of vibrator that they promote. <laughs> you can't make this up. Like the subversion can't stop. Like, can you at least have... A daughter who goes on to be a, a normie. No, no, she needs to subvert uh, Western sexuality. Her too. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and Candace Owen stand in front of these critiques and is like, what's the definition of anti-Semitism? And she catches him. This guy wants the definition of anti-Semitism to be fluid. To be like an amoeba. To be... 
<clears throat> and he's like, well, if you truly understand anti-Semitism, you realize that it's a changing, mutating form. And Candace is holding on to her point and is like, I, I reject this. <clears throat> and she doesn't even... She doesn't even uh, imposes her view, but she she's resisting at first, and then she explains her point. You cannot be... You cannot be a definition if you don't define you cannot uh you you cannot say that something's definition is mutating like because if it's mutating then you need two definitions <laughs> definition and she goes to the root of definition define create a frame uh you know create the limits find the limits of something what is defining it's finding the limits of something. It's finding the point at which something becomes something else. That is what the word definition comes from. And so when this clown rabbi comes in and wants to make the definition of anti-Semitism so loose, she exposes him as, ultimately, you think like a leftist. You think exactly like the leftists want to think around racism. You think exactly like the trans want to think about gender. You want everything to be changeable because you want to be held accountable to nothing. Which Candace, by the way, I've been saying for years, the attack uh, on the English language is ultimately an attack on the contractual state of Western civilization. Language is a contract. The first person who ever uttered a, oh yeah, I'll do that. That was a contract. That was the early form, the earliest form of a contract. I'll do that. Oh, I'll do this. Maybe they were grunting. Maybe they were signifying to each other that they can expect things from each other. And something like marriage, like pronouncing vows, uh, is, is the elementary function of language. It's that I can make a couple of noise, blah, 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 blah. But these noise mean something about what I will do later. They mean that you can expect me to be that way forever or for the time specified in the contract. So when they go after anti-Semitism can be anything, Candace Owen puts her finger on the exact problem here. It's that anti-Semitism is nothing else for the Jews. They know exactly what it is. It's the people who have political interests that are contrary to those of the Jews. Anti-Semitism is anyone who, just by the virtue of thinking differently, constitutes an obstacle to their political project. And their political project can be changeable. For one Jew, it might be this. For another Jew, it might be that. Which is a problem, because then the, the bloodthirsty Jews are showing up in Israel, and oh, they want a genocide in Gaza. And suddenly, it's anti-Semitic to criticize... <clears throat> To criticize what the Jews are doing in Gaza. And so th these circulate, th these amoeba definitions, as Candace lays it out, they are the problem. They are the reason why evil can seep in easily within the system of Israeli politics. Frederick von Finkel says, Jeff, how do you live with the fact that your spouse worships a Jew? <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this is so out there in schizo, okay, that I need to actually, uh, I need to actually explain to people what this guy means. So Frederick von Finkel is an insane schizophrenic guy who believes all sorts of very specific things. One of them being that Jesus was a Jew, and so when he asks me this, basically he he asks me. <coughs> Should I be anti-Semitic against my girlfriend because she's Christian and ultimately Christianity is the worshipping of a Jew? <laughs> uh, it is my view. It is my view that... And I'm going to tell you my view. You won't believe it. It's so in line with Christianity, you, you won't believe it. It is my view, historically, that there was an event which was the events of the life of Jesus Christ. I believe that this has happened. I believe that Jesus Christ has set a moment in, uh, in civilizational history. A moment giving a chance. <clears throat> giving a chance to a bunch of people 
to radicalize themselves in one direction and a bunch of people to radicalize themselves in another direction. The descendants of the Christians today have radicalized themselves in the direction of believing that Jesus Christ was a messiah or savior or whatever. In doing so, they have distinguished themselves from the other branch of people who have been actively responding to this life of Jesus Christ with hate and with denial and with rejection. <clears throat> uh, to me, the Jews that were uh, alive at the time of Jesus Christ, uh, they are not the Jews of today. The Jews of today are Jews that have chosen in the face of the life of Jesus Christ to adopt the Jewish attitude. Therefore, they are different from the Jews that existed then. They might resemble them in some way, just like all humanity resemble each other in some way. We look like the Africans if you compare us to a dolph dolphin. <clears throat> but that is my view. So uh, do I take issue with the fact that my girlfriend worships Jesus Christ? No. <laughs> Not at all. I'm pretty happy about it, if you want my opinion. Let's see. Uh, we're winning so hard. Go check this Candace Owen interview. Go check our whole interaction with Rabbi Shmole or Shmuckley. Um, it's we're winning so hard. CNN at this point is like making vox pop in Israel and uh, and telling them, "Hey, this sounds like ethnic cleansing." <laughs> of the occupied West Bank, a flag flies in the face of a Palestinian village. God is king, it says. Two young settlers guard this illegal outpost. Construction hasn't even begun, but we are not welcome. So they are asking us to leave. They don't want to talk to us. They said they've been here for about nine months. Dotted across the landscape, more signs of the fight to assert Israeli control over Palestinian land. The Arabic names on signposts crudely erased. Under international law, the Beit Hagla settlement... So they, they, they're like, well, these private guys are keeping this place, but they, they're not under orders of the Israeli government, so it's okay. It's, a, it's just a bunch of guys who have decided to make rounds with weapons and make sure that there are no Gazans reoccupying those areas. That is a genocide in process. That is a bunch of people, and <clears throat> I don't even mind. Let's, be, let's just be honest about it. The only thing I, I want is honesty in American media. I actually don't give a shit what happens in the desert of fucking shithole country, okay? I don't give a shit what's happening in Israel, honestly. But I care about the processes of truth finding in America. And that, this whole idea of, I'm going to send private agents, they're not really my army, so it's fine, but they're kind of stepping back over the lands that are cleaned by my army. This is a genocide. This is the, the story for the genocide of every single fucking genocide that has ever happened. The whole walk in the desert, push, bomb, accidentally kill, intentionally kill, and then repopulate with your people. And, oh, oh sorry, we had to... Oh, oh, these guys have decided to take their guns and live there. Uh, new guy says, it's not officially a genocide, so QED. <laughs> Sir, I, I, I am astonished by your demonstration. ...is illegal, but last February, the Israeli government officially recognized it along with eight others, a move the U.S. strongly opposed. We're here because God promised us this land, Azrael Picar tells us. Now these settlers have set their sights on a new prize, one that seemed utterly impossible before October 7. Returning to Gaza, they cheer. That is the goal of Zionist... See, they're raising their children to scream, returning to Gaza, yay! And they want us, the, the Israelis want us, to look on the other side and say, oh, well, they're raising their children to be Hamas terrorists. What are you raising your children for, Israelis? You're raising your children to be just as much terrorist as Hamas is. You're just the other side of a conflict and you're pushing for your own genocide 
convinced that the other side wants your genocide. But I, I love that CNN is showing this other side here. What's the difference between this and the Hamas camps in which they're raising children to hate Israel? It's the exact same thing. These children will grow up in a world where they're, they're, the, the highest moral value would be to push further back the Muslim population so that they can occupy the space. Settler organization Nahala, one of more than a dozen groups now advocating for the re-establishment of Israeli settlements in Gaza. A recent promotional video even boasts that Gaza will become the next Riviera. Daniela Weiss is the godmother of the movement. She's already started recruiting from the 700,000 strong settler community of Israel. We're just arriving now at a settlement in the occupied West Bank and we're heading to a talk that Daniela Weiss is giving to a group of people who are potentially interested in resettling Gaza. They're interested in resettling Gaza. And you guys says something very important. Projection is Israel's fallacy right now. Absolutely. It's uh, everything they say about the Hamas people. I, I have seen no evidence. I, I have seen plenty of evidence that it's true. As at least it's true on the Israeli side. At least it's true on the Israeli side that they are here. They are clearly uh, raising children to be radicals. At least it's true on the Israeli side that they want a complete elimination of the Gazan population as Palestinians. And they, it seems to be clear that one day. The goal will be to resettle this place with Jews. We are for the land of Israel and Ben Gavir, she says. About 20 people gather in the living room of a family home. Weiss knows that for many in this community, there is deep nostalgia for Gush Katif, a block of 21 Israeli settlements that were forcibly evacuated by the IDF in 2005. When and see, they forcibly evacuate with the official governmental tool and then they rely on these volunteers uh, you're, you're not really under our orders but i guess if you want to go live in that house that used to be owned by a muslim i guess you can john selmer says it is interesting to see how they treat their atrocity edit video like pornography it is fascinating how the rabbi the rabbi is telling Candace Owen, i want you to go to a private screening i want to invite you to a private screening of this whole you know this whole atrocity propaganda video that has been shown by israel supposedly to journalists but we are we are just to believe without seeing it with our eyes uh <clears throat> and uh yeah it's it's fascinating how ken does stands and says if you want to send this video to me i might watch it but given the way you treated me and the way you smeared me publicly, I am not particularly uh, interested at committing at this point to go in a theater with you, basically, <laughs> to, to receive an, inv an invitation to cinema with you. Uh, that, is, that was a clever uh, comeback. I really liked it because it was like the rabbi getting denied. Israel left the Gaza Strip. This is the vision of Gaza, she says. You see all the nucleus groups. A map has already been drawn up, with six groups laying claim to different parts of the enclave. So they've just been handing out these little booklets that say, people of Israel, return home, and then underneath, a call to return to the settlements of... All of these are euphemism for genocide. Return home. Gaza. One of the organizers tells the group they have a representative flying to Florida to raise money. Nahala gets support. They're raising money in the U.S. Support from a number of groups in the U.S., including AFSI, Americans for a Safe Israel. And Christians are the target of this because Christians are so generous. But understand that if you give to this, you're giving, your money is trickling down the line of a genocide. Your money is choosing a winner in some place in the Middle East who no one gives a shit about except the people who are personally involved in conquering it. Which co-sponsored a recent webinar on the return to Gush Katif, even as the Biden administration has cracked down on settlements in the West Bank. There is a very strong support mm -hmm. from very prominent, from very, uh, I would say, wealthy people, uh, wealthy Jews, 
in the U.S. Support in the U.S. Can you name any names? No, I cannot. Oh no, I cannot name who is funding this basically human recolonization of a war area that is supposedly only be being taken for security. Secur if you take a land for security, you have no interest in repopulating it with your people. Uh, if you have interest in repopulating with your people, you are engaged in an ethnic cleansing. And billionaire Jews in the U.S. are funding these efforts. From the very beginning of the history of Israel, this has always been it. It's been the English elite, Jewish elite of England, then Jewish elite of America, all plotting, all coordinating a big effort <clears throat> to coordinate an ethnic cleansing in the Middle East and compensate for it by enough control in the media to make it happen and make it happen in a way that people will not question it. And weirdly, as a, as a, as a man of America, I, I don't even feel involved in the first claim. I, I don't care all that much about who makes war in the Middle East and it's going to be a bunch of Jews against a bunch of Muslims, or it's going to be a bunch of Muslims against a bunch of other Muslims. It's like, yeah, go ahead and fight for your piece of desert. But I do care about how this has changed the true finding process of Western civilization and has biased it, has crooked it, and has totally wrecked our ability to know the truth from the media. This is what I care about. And the, re the fact that you have these billionaire Jews both funding the mediatic side and the reconquest side, you know what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with a very evil entity that's willing to lie, willing to mislead, willing to misdirect for accomplishing their, their goal, which, which happens to be killing other people. No. Back at her home in Kedumim settlement, Weiss tells us she's already enrolled 500 families. I, didn't see the clip. I even have, uh, have on, my, on my cell phone names of people who say, to, enlist me, enroll me, I want to join. I, I want to join the groups that are going to settle Gaza. I have to ask you though, because we're sitting here talking and we're listening yeah, to the Yeah, call I'm listening to, to I, ho I hope you are listening to Which it. Which is a reminder, I think, of the people who live here, but yeah. also the people who live in Gaza. What happens to them okay. in this vision of this new settlement with Jewish settlers even in Gaza? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I can answer your question. Okay. Uh, we, ha we have a plan. <laughs> I can't wait for the answer. What is she going to say to this one? What I think about Gaza, the Arabs of Gaza lost the right to be in Gaza on the 7th of... Oh, they have to be elsewhere. That, that is always the response in genocide. They have to be elsewhere. Uh, not my problem. They have to be somewhere safe, somewhere out there. And everyone wants everyone else to be out there. <clears throat> Let me tell you, as an artist, if you could give me the chance to expel the entire normie population of North America, they have to, they have to go. They have to go. They have to go somewhere safe. We will... We will make accommodations, we will, we will make cruise ships, normies like cruise ships. We will have cruise ships, but they have to go elsewhere, they have lost their right to be around me. Of October, yes, I do hear the mosque, I do hear the, 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 the prayer. Things were different until the 7th of October. No Arab, I'm speaking about more than 2 million Arabs. Mm -hmm. They will not stay there. We, Jews, will be in Gaza. That sounds like ethnic cleansing. Okay. <laughs> the Arabs want to annihilate the state of Israel. So you can call them monsters. You can, uh, you can call, their, uh, call them cleansing of Jews. We are not doing to them. They are doing to us. I couldn't... <laughs> <laughs> and here you have it, the whole projection and version. The fact that, you know, credit to Clarissa Ward. She's been at times serving warmongering interest. Uh, in Ukraine, I found her stuff doubtable at best. Uh, weird, fucking weird. But here she goes for it. I mean, she's serving the far left, academic, kind of, you know, people who have become so communist and far left that they actually start realizing, hey, uh, Israel is uh, pretty evil. <laughs> there is such a thing. And I think she's serving this side here very well. And she's showing this woman looking at the sky like this. I, I, 
it's not us, it's them that are doing to us. And you can see she's trying to find her words to get out of this trap. That Yes, you're committing ethnic cleansing. This is what you just described. You, you, you just described all of it. And that's all I care about, you know. Uh, let's be honest about what's happening. And part of the problem is that we can't be honest because of precisely the, the kind of Brett Weinstein reaction, which is, I publish a, a science theory, then I'm honest on certain race-related questions and Israeli-related uh, questions, and now Brett Weinstein says, I don't want to talk to him, I don't want to engage with this theory, because he's a white nationalist, supremacist, uh, anti-Semite, and he has Nazis in his crowd. It sucks, and Candace Owen went after it, and we now have Leather Apron Club, a massive drop today. He drops, I noticed something interesting about Elon Musk's tweets. Wow. That is quantification of a kind that we needed. Because it's one thing to know, okay, the elite podcast industry is dominated by Jews. Everyone kind of knew it and felt it. But it was good of Letter Apron Club to describe this. But now he's going further. He's going, hey, Elon Musk, when he tweets, just tweeting out of nowhere. He doesn't respond to people randomly. He has discriminatory, he has a disproportionate impact in promoting Jewish accounts. And Letter Apron Club quantifies it to something like around 30%. So Jews are 1% of the population. If you expected them, to be randomly selected by Elon Musk, Elon Musk would roughly talk to one person. One person of his retweets and replies would be to Jews. It's 30 percent. That indicates that there is a penetration of Jewish interest in, in representation and in the pulling out of accounts in the public conversation, even below the line of the podcast guest, because the, Okay, the podcast guests, you can make all sorts of arguments. You can say, oh, <coughs> maybe they're just more networked. Maybe they're just more lucky. Maybe they're just more intelligent. And there's ways to debunk the, all of these claims. But this is beautiful because it shows that in the very basic conversation, the public conversation is penetrated with Jewish interest. And we should talk about this. We should talk about how in 2024 this is happening and keeping us from calling a genocide the genocide.